Hello everyone, this is Rig. Welcome to an episode on Islam and its impact in the Middle East. We are going to discuss how did Islam originate, when did it originate and what role did it play in the area of Middle East. Now even though this video is made according to the ICC syllabus of class 7, anyone interested in history may go through this video, it will help you. And as usual, keep a notebook with you so that you can note down the important points. In the last part of this video, we are also going to discuss about the question and their answers which may come in your exam. So let's start with Islam and its impact in the Middle East. Arabian Peninsula before Islam. So Islam originated in the area of Arabian Peninsula. How was it before Islam came? The Arabian Peninsula located at the crossroads of Asia, Africa and Europe witnessed the emergence of Islam in the 7th century CE. So this area is the connection of Asia, Africa and Europe. Three of these major continents of the world connect together in the Arabian Peninsula and this was the place where Islam emerged during the 7th century CE. Surrounded by the Red Sea in the west, Arabian Sea in the south and Persian Gulf in the east, it was strategically important for trade. So it had on the three sides of the Arabian Peninsula, there were three important seas. Who were they? Red Sea in the west, Arabian Sea in the south and Persian Gulf in the east. So these three areas were very much important trading routes. Hence, it became very much strategically important for the purpose of trade and commerce. Mecca and Medina, situated in Hejaz region, were key centers of Islam. So, Mecca and Medina, both of these holy places of Islam, are located in the Arabian Peninsula. Tribal societies dominated the region practicing various religious beliefs and customs. So before the emergence of Islam, tribal societies dominated the region. It was a region where many tribes lived together and they did not have any particular religion to follow. They followed different kinds of religious beliefs and practiced many kinds of traditions. The Arabian Peninsula's geographical location made it a hub for trade and cultural exchange, laying the groundwork for the rise of Islam. So it was the geographical location of the Arabian Peninsula which made it important for trade and as an area of cultural exchange. Thus, there was the groundwork. All the situations were perfect for the rise of Islam. Bedouins. Who were the Bedouins? Bedouins were nomadic tribes of the Arabian Peninsula, primarily engaged in camel herding and trade. They were nomadic tribe. Nomadic tribes means tribes who do not settle in a particular area permanently. They move from one place to another. So these were the people who never settled in a particular place. And they moved around the Arabian Peninsula doing camel herding and different kinds of small and large scale trades. They referred to themselves as Arabs and were organized into clans and tribes. So they referred, they called themselves Arabs and how was their political organization? They were organized into clans and tribes. Known for their adaptability to harsh desert conditions, their culture emphasized hospitality and loyalty. So they were very much prominent for adapting towards the for adapting to the harsh desert condition. It is very difficult to live in desert because the climate is very harsh and not at all suited for life. So they these Bedouin people, they could live perfectly adapting to the harsh condition of the desert. 
their culture emphasized hospitality and loyalty so they were very much acceptable of different cultures and they were very much loyal to the people whom they served by the 6th century ce some bedouin tribes adopted trade as their primary occupation so by the 6th century ce some of the bedouin became proper traders hence they adopted trade as their primary occupation the tribal structure and traditions of the bedouin significantly influenced the formation of islamic society so it was the tribal structure of the bedouin which influenced the formation of islamic political units next we will see the rise of mecca mecca is the holy city or the holy place of islam mecca is located in modern saudi arabia is the holiest city for the muslims as prophet muhammad was born here so it was in this place that prophet muhammad was born and today mecca is located in the country of saudi arabia and it is the holiest place for the muslim or for the islamic faith mecca gained prominence in the 6th century ce due to its strategic location at the junction of major trade routes connecting palestine yemen ethiopia and persian gulf so mecca was a very prominent place in the 6th century ce why because it is at the junction means it is at the connection of different major trade routes and what were these trade routes connected with they were connected with countries like or places like palestine yemen ethiopia and persian gulf all these together were connected through mecca hence it was a very strategic location for trade the kaaba in mecca served as a pilgrimage site for various tribes even before the rise of islam so even before the rise of islam the kaaba kaaba is a place in mecca which served as a pilgrimage site to various kinds of tribes and this happened from before the rise of islam tribal conflicts often arose over the control of mecca due to its economic and spiritual significance so there were tribal conflicts among the people among the tribes about who will control mecca and this happened because mecca was a city which had both economic significance and also spiritual significance it became the focal point of islamic practices with muslims worldwide praying in its direction so muslims today pray worldwide from all over the world they pray on the direction of mecca so it becomes a focal point for the islamic faith prophet muhammad who was prophet muhammad prophet muhammad was born in 570 ce in mecca to the hasim clan of the quraish tribe so quraish tribe had hasim hasim clan within itself and there within this clan prophet muhammad was born around 570 ce orphaned at a young age he was raised by his uncle abu talib a respected meccan so as we know that prophet muhammad was born in mecca his parents died at a very young age he was raised by his uncle a man named abu talib and he was a very respected citizen of mecca muhammad traveled extensively with his uncle for trade exposing him to christian and jewish beliefs so muhammad because of the purpose of trade prophet muhammad traveled extensively with his uncle in the various parts of the arabian peninsula and knew about he came to know about different christian and jewish beliefs known for his honesty and integrity he earned the title al amin the trustworthy so he was known to be very honest and a man of his word 
so therefore he was given the title al amin means a person who is very trustworthy these early experiences and interactions shaped his spiritual understanding and future role as a prophet so it was through his early experiences in life that he shaped his life as a prophet that provided him base for his spiritual role and spiritual understanding which later on becomes very important in his life so divine revelations prophet muhammad had some divine revelations we will see about them in 610 ce prophet muhammad experienced his first divine revelation while meditating in a cave near mecca so he had first divine connection in 610 ce and it happened while he was meditating in a cave near the holiest city mecca he declared himself the messenger of allah chosen to spread his word so he declared himself that i am a messenger of allah and he has been sent to this uh, this world to spread the message of allah muhammad's teachings emphasized monotheism rejecting idol worship and polytheism so muhammad taught people about monotheism and he rejected every form of idol worship and worshiping of many gods that is polytheism his wife khadija became his first follower along with a small group of meccans so his first follower was his wife and a small group of meccan people people from mecca became his followers these revelations formed the basis of islam focusing on unity and single divine entity allah so these revelations it was because of these revelations that islam got a base and the focus on single uh, unity and single divine entity allah became very much prominent or the basis of is opposition in mecca it was not easy for prophet muhammad to spread his message in the beginning part of his life so he faced a lot of opposition from the people in mecca muhammad's teachings faced resistance from meccan elites who opposed his monotheistic message so elite people of mecca did not like his message which spread the message of a single god hence he was opposed very much from the beginning only he faced resistance idol worship was integral to mecca's economy and muhammad's denunciation of it threatened their interest so idol worship was not only a matter of faith but also it was related to mecca's economy and muhammad when he denounced all forms of idol worship that threatened the interest of the meccan elites or the rich people in mecca became offended his uncle abu talib provided protection enabling him to continue his mission so his uncle abu talib gave him protection he gave him security and thus prophet muhammad could continue with his mission despite opposition muhammad gradually gained followers challenging the traditional beliefs of meccan society however he gained followers and thus he could challenge the traditional beliefs in the society of mecca the hostility towards muhammad increased after the death of his protector abu talib so when his uncle abu talib died there was no more proper protection for prophet muhammad hence hostility or the enmity towards muhammad increased when his uncle died now hijra what is hijra in 622 ce muhammad and his followers emigrated to medina due to escalating threats in mecca in mecca the rich elite people did not like prophet muhammad and so because of their threat it was a life risk for prophet muhammad to stay in mecca hence he migrated with his followers to medina 
and this migration from Mecca to Medina in 622 CE is called Hijra. This migration known as the Hijra marked the beginning of Islamic calendar which is Hijri. So Hijra is the migration of Prophet Muhammad and his followers from Mecca to Medina and with this event there is the starting of the Islamic calendar which is also known as Hijri. In Medina, Muhammad gained significant support consolidating his position as a leader. So it was in Medina that Prophet Muhammad got a lot of support and he was seen to be a leader. His position as a leader became dominant when he reached Medina. Within 10 years, he united most of the Arabian Peninsula under Islam. So within 10 years, most of the Arabian Peninsula was united under the faith and beliefs of Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad passed away in 632 CE in Medina, leaving behind a rapidly growing faith. So it was in 632 CE that Prophet Muhammad passed away and this happened in Medina and he left behind a faith which was growing very rapidly. Islam. Now we will go into the major part of Islam. Islam meaning submission to Allah became the religion founded by Muhammad. So Islam actually means submission to Allah, dedicating one's life towards Allah and this was the religion which found which was founded by Prophet Muhammad his followers known as Muslims adhered to his teachings and way of life so the followers of Islam are called Muslims and they followed the teachings and way of life of Prophet Muhammad Islam is based on monotheism emphasizing submission to one God. So Islam is based on submission to one God which is Allah. The key principles included leading a simple life, rejecting idol worship and practicing equality. So what are the main things or the key principles in Islam? They are rejecting idol worship and practicing Equality means all are equal and idols should not be worshipped. That those are the key principles followed in Islam. Muhammad's teachings gained widespread acceptance uniting diverse Arab tribes under common faith. Now what are the five principles of Islam? The five pillars of Islam guide Muslim worship and daily life. So these are the five rules or the five things which every Muslim must follow in order to lead their daily life. Shahada. Shahada is the declaration of faith which means according to Islam philosophy there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. The next is Salat which means performing five daily prayers facing the Kaaba in Mecca. So one should, uh, one Muslim should practice five daily prayers, five times play, prayer in a day and that should be done facing in the direction of Kaaba in Mecca. Zakat, giving alms to poor as an act of charity. So giving charity towards the poor is also included in the five principles. Saum. Saum means observing fast during the holy month of Ramadan. So during the holy month of Ramadan, the Muslims should be fasting. Hajj. Hajj means pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in a lifetime if financially and physically possible. So every Muslim must at least once go to Mecca as a pilgrimage. The Quran. What is Quran and how? what are the basis of philosophies in Quran? 
Quran is the holy book of Islam containing the revelations received by Muhammad over 23 years. So this book is considered to be the holy book of Islam and what does it contain? It contains the divine revelations which Prophet Muhammad received for over 23 years. It is written in Arabic and is considered the literal word of Allah by the Muslim. So Quran is written in Arabic and this is considered to be the literal word of Allah. Means they are the messages of Allah and the Muslims consider it as very much holy. The Quran serves as a guide for spiritual, ethical and social conduct for the Muslims. So according to the Muslims, Quran is the guide for how one should live their spiritual, ethical and social life. It emphasizes monotheism, justice, compassion and obedience to Allah. The Quran remains central to Islamic teachings and practices worldwide. So Quran is the basis of Islamic teachings and practices all over the world. Now Khalifa or Caliphate. What is Khalifa or Caliphate? After Muhammad's death, Abu Bakr, his close companion, became the first Khalif or Khalifa. So after the death of Muhammad, Abu Bakr became the leader, which is the first Khalif or Khalifa. Now who was Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr was his close companion and friend. The Caliphate served as both a religious and political leadership system for the Muslims. So the Caliph was both the religious leader of the Muslims and also the political leader of the Muslims. So Caliphate served as both a religious and political leadership for the Muslims. Caliphs were seen as successors of Muhammad, tasked with guiding the Muslim community. So these are the leaders who is thought to be or who is seen as the successor of Prophet Muhammad and what is their duty? Their duty is to guide the Muslim community all over the world. The Caliphate played a key role in spreading Islam beyond the Arabian Peninsula. So it was because of the Caliphate that Islam could spread beyond the Arabian Peninsula. It marked the beginning of a unified Islamic empire with strong central authority. So it was Caliphate which unified the Islamic empire. Now we will see who was Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr strengthened the Arab armies and transforming them into a formidable force. So he was the leader or the first caliph who united the Arab armies and strengthening them with the help of latest technologies at that period of time. And thus Arab armies under Abu Bakr transformed into a formidable strong military force. Under his leadership, Islamic territories expanded into Iran, Syria and Central Asia. So it spread beyond the Arabian Peninsula at the leadership of Abu Bakr and it was uh, during his leadership that Islamic territories expanded into Iran, Syria and Central Asia. Cities like Baghdad, Cairo and Damascus flourished as centers of culture and learning. So all these cities were very much important at that point of time because they were centers of culture and learning. Abu Bakr's leadership solidified the foundation of the Islamic Caliphate. So it was through Abu Bakr's leadership that Islamic Caliphate became a leadership organization for the Muslims all over the world. His reign marked the beginning of Islamic conquest and cultural integration. So it was through his leadership and his reign that Islam became a conquering religion and they, uh, from his time Islamic conquest and cultural integration had started. Umayyad Caliphs. Who were the Umayyad Caliphs? The Umayyad Caliphs shifted the capital to 
Damascus establishing a vast empire. So from the time of the Umayyad Caliphs, the capital of the Islamic empire was shifted to a place called Damascus and a vast Islamic empire was established. They expanded Islamic rule to Central Asia, North Africa and Spain. So all these new regions came under the influence of Islam. Central Asia, North Africa and Spain. The Umayyad dynasty played a key role in spreading Islam to Sindh and the Indus region in 712 CE. So it was through Umayyad dynasty that Islam spread up to the northwest boundary of the Indian subcontinent that is Sindh and in the Indus region that is the region of the Indus valley in around 712 CE. The dynasty is known for its administrative reforms and architectural achievements. So this dynasty or the Umayyad Caliphs are famous for their administrative reforms and also uh, architectural innovations. Despite challenges, the Umayyads consolidated Islamic rule over diverse regions. So there were many challenges, but still Umayyads were successful in consolidating Islamic rule over diverse regions. Abbasid Caliphs. Who were the Abbasid Caliphs? The Abbasid Caliphs shifted the capital from Damascus to Baghdad. So it was at the time of the Abbasid Caliphs that capital was once again shifted from Damascus to Baghdad, making it a cultural hub. Their rule marked the golden age of Islamic civilization, fostering advancements in science and arts. So it was during the time of the Abbasid Caliphs that Islam gained prominence in the field of science and arts and their rule marked the golden age of the Islamic civilization. Islam expanded into Persia and beyond embracing diverse cultures. So new areas like Persia and crossing Persia, the areas also were under the Islamic influence. The Abbasids emphasized unity within the Islamic community beyond Arab ethnicity. So the Abbasids focused not only on the Arab ethnic people but also united Islam beyond Arab ethnicity. Or the people outside Arab also started following Islam. Their reign saw significant contributions in mathematics, literature and philosophy. So it was during the time of the Abbasid Caliphs that significant advancements took place in the field of mathematics, literature and philosophy. Contributions of Islam. Now what are the key contributions of Islamic faith? Islam contributed extensively to global knowledge and culture. How? They introduced the decimal system and algebra from Indian traditions. So from the Indian traditions, they took the decimal and the algebra and incorporated them in Central Asia. Advanced geography and astronomy inventing tools like the astrolabel. So astrolab was a tool which was invented by the Islamic Empire. Enriched literature with works like 1001 Nights. So the Arabian Nights were masterpieces of literature which were introduced by the Islamic Empire. They fostered trade and cultural exchange across continents. So it was through the unification of the Islamic Empire that trade and cultural exchange among the continents was enhanced. Promoted architectural innovations and artistic expression. Now spread of Islam. How much did it spread in the world? How much did the Islamic faith influence the people worldwide? Islam spread through trade, conquest and cultural exchanges. So there were three main mediums through which Islam spread all over the world. That is through trade, through conquest and cultural exchanges. 
the Abbasid policy of expansion and Arab traders facilitated its reach to the West and Central Asia. So the policy of uh, expansion by the Abbasid Caliphs expanded the trade routes of the Arabian Peninsula and it was through their efforts that Islam could reach to the West and Central Asia. Interactions with diverse cultures enriched Islamic practices and traditions. The faith attracted converts due to its simplicity, inclusiveness and universal appeal. So Islam was very much attractive to people all over the world because it was very simple and it accepted people from all other religions. Hence, it attracted converts. Islam became a unifying force in, in a fragmented world influencing politics and society. Now, how did Islam come to the Indian subcontinent? The Arab traders introduced Islam to India in 7th and 8th centuries. So, Arabians were very good traders and as traders, they had connection with the Indian subcontinent. So, it was through the Arab traders, Islam became introduced in India during the 7th and 8th centuries. Early settlements in Sindh and Multan facilitated cultural exchange but had limited impact initially. So, there were a few Islamic settlements in the areas of Sindh and Multan but they did not have a lot of impact. They facilitated a limited amount of cultural exchange. Muhammad bin Qasim's conquest of Sindh in 712 CE marked Islam's formal entry into India. So Islam formally entered India with Muhammad bin Qasim's Conquest of Sindh. Sindh is the northwestern province of the Indian subcontinent and it was uh, it was invaded and conquered by Muhammad bin Qasim in around 712 CE. With that, Islam entered into the Indian subcontinent. Subsequent Turkish invasions by Mahmud Ghazni and Muhammad Ghori expanded its influence. Later on, many other invaders like Mahmud Ghazni and Muhammad Ghori came to India and established their own empires. Muhammad Ghori established the Delhi Sultanate with which Islam, Islam became prominent in the Indian subcontinent. Over time, Islam blended with local cultures, shaping India's social and political fabric. Now we will go through the questions and their answers which will help you to understand the chapter better. What are the geographical boundaries of the Arabian Peninsula? The Arabian Peninsula is surrounded by the Red Sea to the west, the Arabian Sea to the south and the Persian Gulf to the east. Why was Mecca significant before the advent of Islam? Mecca was significant due to its strategic location at the intersection of major trade routes and the presence of Kaaba, which was a pilgrimage site for various tribes. When and where was Prophet Muhammad born? Prophet Muhammad was born in 570 CE in Mecca in the Hasim clan of the Quraysh tribe. What is the meaning of Hijra? Hijra refers to Prophet Muhammad's migration from Mecca to Medina in 622 CE, marking the beginning of the Islamic calendar. What are the five pillars of Islam? The five pillars of Islam are Sahada, Faith, Salat, Prayer, Zakat, Charity, Som, Fasting and Hajj. Pilgrimage. What is Quran? Quran is the holy book of Islam containing the revelations received by Prophet Muhammad over 23 years. Who was the first Khalif after Prophet Muhammad? Abu Bakr, a close companion of Prophet Muhammad, became the first Khalif after Muhammad's death. 
name any two contributions of the Abbasid Caliphs. The Abbasid Caliphs contributed to the development of Baghdad as a cultural hub and advanced fields like mathematics, astronomy and literature. Who introduced Islam to India and when? Islam was introduced to India by Arab traders during the 7th and 8th centuries through invasions by Muhammad bin Qasim in 712 CE. Describe the significance of the Arabian Peninsula before the advent of Islam. The Arabian Peninsula was a crucial region due to its strategic location connecting Asia, Africa and Europe. It was a hub for trade with Mecca and Medina serving as important centers. The region was home to tribal societies practicing polytheism and various indigenous beliefs. The harsh desert conditions fostered resilience and unity among its inhabitants, particularly the Bedouins. Explain the life and teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad was born in 570 CE in Mecca. Orphaned at an early age, he was raised by his uncle Abu Talib. During his travels as a trader, he encountered Jews and Christians, which influenced his spiritual journey. In 610 CE, he received divine revelations, proclaiming monotheism and denouncing idol worship. His teachings emphasized equality, charity, and submission to Allah, forming the basis of Islam. Discuss the reasons for the opposition faced by Prophet Muhammad in Mecca. Prophet Muhammad faced opposition in Mecca because of his monotheistic teachings, threatened the polit theistic traditions that were integral to Mecca's economy and social structure. The city elites opposed his message as it challenged their authority and established idol worship centered around the Kaaba. What is the importance of Hijra in Islamic history? Hijra marks the migration of Prophet Muhammad and his followers from Mecca to Medina in 622 CE. It signifies the establishment of first Muslim community and the beginning of the Islamic calendar. This migration led the foundation for the spread of Islam and the political consolidation of the Muslim leadership. How did the Caliphate contribute to the expansion of Islam? The Caliphs expanded Islamic territories beyond the Arabian Peninsula, reaching Central Asia, North Africa and Spain. They established trade networks, promoted cultural integration and developed administrative systems. Cities like Baghdad and Damascus flourished under their rule, spreading Islamic teachings and culture. Highlight the contributions of the Abbasid Caliphs to science and culture. The Abbasid Caliphs made significant contributions to science and culture. They established the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, fostering research in astronomy, mathematics, medicine and philosophy. They also promoted literature, producing works like 1001 Nights and advanced architectural styles. What role did trade play in the spread of Islam? Trade played a crucial role in spreading Islam as Arab traders carried Islamic beliefs to distant lands including Southeast Asia, Africa and India. They established settlements integrated with local communities and shared their religious practices, leading to gradual acceptance of Islam in these regions. Compare the rule of the Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphs. 
the umayyads focused on military expansion moving the capital to damascus and extending their empire to spain and sindh in contrast the abbasids emphasized cultural and intellectual development shifting the capital to baghdad the abbasids expanded islam's influence through knowledge and integration rather than conquest explain the introduction and the spread of islam in the indian subcontinent islam was introduced to india by the arab traders who settled in the coastal regions it gained prominence after muhammad bin qasim's conquest of sindh in 712 ce subsequent turkish invasions by mahmud ghazni and muhammad ghori further spread islam over time cultural exchanges between muslims and locals shaped indian society discuss the significant significance of the five pillars of islam in a muslim's life the five pillars of islams are foundations of the muslim faith and practices shahada affirms belief in allah and muhammad salat provides spiritual discipline through prayer zakat promotes social welfare by helping the needy som fosters self control during ramadan and hajj strengthens unity by bringing muslims together in mecca so that was all about the impact of islam in central asia or the middle east hope you have liked the video please support me so that i can bring brighter contents in future thank you so much for your love and support